Hey folks, welcome to Fishing for Real. Today I'm down at the lake shore again where last week I caught some nice largemouth bass on a tiny little crick hopper. Today I'm going to be dragging a weedless, weightless, soft plastic bait minnow imitation through the grass to see if there's any largemouth bass waiting in there to ambush a minnow. Come along and let's go see what I can find. I'll see you down there. So like I said, I caught some bass. I think the bass are up shallow in the grass so I've got this yum thing here a slug looking thing rigged up weightless and weedless I'm just gonna cast it out and drag it through the grass to see if there's any bass waiting in there to ambush something and let's see what we can get It's going to stay up near the surface. And the way it darts, it's going to pop and dart and look like some injured critter. Still sinks pretty quickly. And after the, ba the bass are off the spawning beds, they start feeding more on fish in the upper water column and less so much on crawfish. I know you can still catch them on flipping baits, but if you've got something like a, a fluke that you can fish up higher off the bottom like this through the grass, where the bass might be hiding out, waiting for a, you know a, a hapless little fish to swim by. You might latch onto a big one. You just never know. You kind of want your bait to look like a a fish that's. Not right in the head. I'm kind of swimming weird out in the open, darting, wiggling, not looking healthy. Now you see the shad popping out there. I see a lot more shad popping up in here today. A lot of times where you see shad, there'll be other fish following them. All you can do is reel your, your bait in when it's in something this thick, reel it in, pop it over the grass, wait for it to sink a bit, wait for your line to go slack, and keep an eye on your line as much as anything to see if you see the line jump. Like that right there. Uh-huh, I'll declare. The line moved, tightened up, and started swimming off. Look at there. How about that? Huh, huh. Hold still, fella, and I'll get you off of there. Okay. Oh, yeah, here we go. How easy does it, dude? I'll get you off of there. All right, guy. Okay. Little largemouth. A little largemouth, but a largemouth nonetheless. It's a bass. I'm pleased that my idea of using a uh, weightless, weedless, kind of a flute type bait in these, in the shallow grass, has worked out. Bye, guy.
How about that? And this grass, I want that hook buried, the tip buried. I know it's a little bit harder to set the hook maybe, but I do not want to keep getting hung up in the grass. Oh, something's moving out there. So once again, I let it settle. When that bass hit it, the line went tight and moved off to the side. Obviously, it's not going to do that itself since it's not alive. So you just kind of be a, in this case, a line watcher. You may or may not feel it through the pole, depending upon how sensitive your pole is. So you just got to watch that line and see if it twitches or moves. Once you pull it up over a piece of grass, give it a moment to sink to the bottom. Keep an eye on that line. Because when it's falling to the bottom is when it could twitch. Reel it a bit and let it sink. Reel it a bit and let it sink. Just kind of hop skipping it along the bottom. It picks it up off the bottom and it sinks to the bottom. Kind of looks like a, an injured minnow. Sometimes if your line goes tight and you think something's got it, you can reel down and put some tension on the line and see if it feels like it pulls back or if it moves off to the side. If it pulls back or moves off to the side, I'm going to let you know that a bass has probably got it in his mouth moving with it. That's when you want to watch it real close. When it hops over a piece of grass and starts falling to the bottom, it's always a good chance or a good time for a bass to run out and hit it. Because it splashes the water, a bass gets the bass's attention. He looks towards the splash, and he sees your bait falling to the bottom. You know, come out and hit it. I suppose you could probably rig this kind of a... God bless it! Golly, Bill! Oh, man, that was a nicer one. Shoot, fire, I wonder if he'll come back. Man, oh, man, the shivets. Will he come back for it? He's still going to be over there. He hit at the bait and missed it. It's not like I stuck him with a hook or anything. Since that bass hit me right there, I'm going to work that spot over and over again. Oops. Till I feel like he must have just left. Because I believe he probably followed that up to the shore from that far grass bed out there. I'm out here again with my Shakespeare Ugly Stick, $30 rod, and my Zebco 33, $20 reel, 50 bucks. You can catch a bass from the shore. But you gotta rig this bait weedless if you're gonna be casting in the grass like this. Now I could be, I do have some very light jig heads, it's very shallow water here so I don't need a half ounce necessarily or a big jig head to get to the bottom. But I wanted to try to work this thing through the grass as close to weightless as possible. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today at Fishing for Real for another trip to the shoreline. Today I tested my theory about a weightless, weedless, soft, jerk type bait around the grass where I've caught some bass recently to see if there's some big ones hanging out. I caught a couple of little guys, I had some nice misses, some good sized ones that just missed, didn't hook up, but they were in there and it worked. So that taught me something. I hope you got something from this. If you would, give it a thumbs up. 
subscribe, comment. I look forward to seeing you again on another Fishing for Real. Thanks and goodbye. Thank you.